Hello, this is Anna Amelia from Northeast Animal Rights. Uh, today we're doing a bit of an unusual interview. We are talking to, um, to some activists um, in and outside of NIA um, who've been attending SAVES. It's been quite important a uh, couple of weeks because we've had the anniversary of Regan Russell's, um, you know, the first anniversary of her, her death when she was killed in Canada um, by a pink um, truck taking, taking pigs to slaughterhouse. Um, but also we have the um, fifth anniversary of the Manchester Pig Save. So, um, so thank you very much everyone for joining us. So I'd like to say hello to Leslie. Hello. Leslie, uh, hello to Bevan as well. Hi, yeah. And to Tammy. Hi. And to Catherine. Hi. Okay. So we, we know obviously that this is quite a, um, you know, a very sensitive and distressing subject to talk about. So if any of you need to take a moment out, just, um, you know, just turn your, your video off and then come back when you feel you're able to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to talk about anything particularly graphic in here. It's more of a very emotive subject. Okay. And we're going to be talking about the questions we get asked most of the time, which is what are saves and why do we do these? So first of all, Leslie, would you mind explaining to us, um, you know, what, ex what saves are and how they work? Okay. A save is an event held outside of an abattoir or a food processing plant, as corners prefer to call them. Uh, large trucks arrive, transporting approximately 150 souls destined for slaughter. They arrive one after another at the gates of the plant, where they're intercepted by vegan activists. The animals arrive packed like sardines, dressed and often hyperventilating due to exhaustion and terror. Food and water has usually been withheld for 24 hours, which um, is done to make the kill flow a little more manageable. Um, and what we activists do is we get a, a chance to bear witness to their plight and can offer a few gentle words of kindness before they go to a, a, a barbaric and, and bloody death. We furnish the gates with banners, posters, flowers, so that members of the public who pass by can be made aware of what the place actually is, because often they're, they're, they're unaware that processing food means killing sentient beings. And that's basically what yeah. they did. Yeah. I think I think that's a, it was a very, very good, good um, explanation of, you know, from start to finish it with the, of the process of what happens. Um, and it is very important that, um, you know, we, we know as activists that a lot of these these places are dressed up as something that they're actually not. And we do raise awareness by literally just putting the banner with slaughterhouse on because people drive past them, you know, sort of like to and from work and don't even realise what they are. So, so, ta so, uh, so Bevan, could you just, um, could you explain why you decided to do this Manchester one, please? Well, um, I'm relatively new to doing these vigils and um, things like that. So the only one I'd recently been to was the one at Buridan the week before. Um, and I know that our group and North East Animal Safe don't tend to do the pig ones as often due to the distance to get to them. So I, I knew that because it was coming up the, the following week and I've made quite good friends with the people in our group. And I felt, you know, I was I felt confident in my ability to be able to fully express how I'm feeling with these people. So I just didn't want to miss out on the opportunity, really. And then for me to have to wait. Um, so I just felt like it was the right time, really, to bear witness and see how it compared really to the, the cow ones, which, you know, we're all quite familiar with. Yeah. So, um, so Tammy, can you explain the difference between, obviously you've been to both Burden and to the, to the Manchester one, can you explain the difference between the two saves that the North East Animal Rights um, support in terms of the processes, the animals and the setup? Yeah, of course. So, um, obviously the one in Burundi that we normally attend up the North East is mainly cows and sheep. Um, I've only recently done three myself, so I'm fairly new like Bevan is. Um, so I've only ever witnessed the, the cows going in. I haven't seen any sheep as yet. Um, so yeah, so obviously the cows, um, it's quite like, it. so obviously the Manchester one as well, um, that's a bit bigger than Burundi, but obviously just pigs. So we did see like a lot more trucks going to the Manchester one than we did at Burundin. And I think like in terms of obviously differences is the way that the animals are killed within both slaughterhouses. Um, now for the one in Burundin, I know obviously the ball gun, ball gun is used um, to stun them. And then unfortunately they do get slit, the throat slit. Um, however, the one down in Manchester, the pig, they are they're stunned by the CO2, so obviously eight of them are shoved into a gas chamber, um, and then pretend then they get their throat slit, and then obviously put into a hot bath and boiled, basically. So they're two completely different in the processes of how the animals are killed there. Um, and 
the kind of it's quite a completely different setup and I think your feelings towards both of them are completely different because of the way they are mm -hmm. um but yeah it's just yeah none of them are, none of them are nice to be honest with yeah. you so I mean, there's some horrific processes you've described in there, and obviously people are sort of very um, fed the market and it's about humane slaughter and what you've described there. I mean, neither of those are humane uh, in any shape or form, and they certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want them to happen to any of their companion animals. Um, and it's almost sort of beggars belief that these are actually legal processes in the UK, you know, that it is actually OK to do yeah. that to, to, to animals. Um, so, Catherine, um, what, what, what do you say when people ask why you do these vigils? I know you're the admin of, uh, of the Northeast Animal Safe Group. So, so why do you, you know, what, what do you say to people who ask you why you do them and what do you hope to achieve from them? Um, so there's three, three main reasons why we do them. Um, the first, first one is to pay respect to the animals who are going to slaughter. And um, since most of the ones who do will like, never have been um, seen as anything other than livestock. Um, the second reason is like, to provide a peaceful form of resistance to um, the farmers, the drivers and um, the slaughterhouse workers who, who are benefiting directly from uh, the explo exploitation of these animals. And I hope that our presence there will encourage them to think a bit about the ethics of what they're doing. Um, but then the main reason that... Um, that I'm there anyway is to try and capture footage of the animals as they're going in and I hope that um, when I share that online with family and friends that, um, that they'll make the connection between the animals that they can see there who are about to be killed and, um, and the animals that they eat or whose products they eat and that they might think a bit more about um, kind of what sentient beings had to go through to make that possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, you're right. I mean, it, it is about making a, a big connection there and people don't understand um, the process. Um, and also, I think people find it very, very difficult to understand why we put ourselves through this, um, put ourselves in this situation. But all the reasons mm -hmm. you've said are exactly the same uh, from, for me as well. I mean, you know, I find that it's uh, I can I can speak the truth very clearly when when we're talking to people in when we do with our stores in Newcastle, um, to tell people that actually we have been to slaughterhouses. We know how terrified these animals are when they go in. Um, mm -hmm. None of them are you know they are not un unaware of what's happening. Um, they're not oblivious to it. They are stressed from the drive alone. Never mind anything else which is going to happen to them. So it is pretty grim. Um, so Tammy, um, I mean this is a bit more of, sort of like a of a sensitive one, but how do you um? How emotive are the smells and the sounds, um, the smells and the sounds and the sights that you see and you hear? Just all I can say is horrific, basically. Um, I think with the cows, I mean, I can remember me first seeing, and I can remember the smell being like really distinctive. And it's kind of, I was expecting a smell like you would smell when you're out in the field, you know, cow manure and all of that. But it's actually like, it's kind of, you can kind of smell the death. You can smell, kind of smell the blood, the fear, and it's just, it's something that hits you and it stays with you. Um, and the likewise with the pigs, you know, there is a certain smell and there is, again, you can smell the fear. And for me, anyway, I know after, after I've been the save, on the drive home or throughout the day when I'm really looking at footage, I can still smell that smell. And like now and again, it'll kind of whiff past, past us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just the worst thing you can imagine. Um, but then also as well, it's the noises and how frightened the animals are. So both the cows and the pigs, you can see the eyes are bulging, you know, they just look in fear, you know, and then they're not used to like kind of, especially pigs aren't used to human contact. So they're a bit like, what's going on here? Why are all these people looking at us? Why are they, you know, and you can just see the absolute fear in their eyes. Um, and I mean, as well, when it comes to noises, so, with the cows, I've never really heard much noise, just obviously the clattering of the hooves in the truck when the truck comes to stop. But with the cows down in Manchester, there is, there is a, a pathway behind where you can go down and actually it's sort of where you can actually go. You can hear the screams of the pigs from when they're going at the gas chamber and them screams are something I never, I mean, I try to prepare myself for them, but to actually listen and hear how how the scream is just absolutely terrifying and it's something that you wouldn't I mean 
it, I just can't even explain how bad it is. It's just so loud. It's so deafening. It's just and it's so emotional, and it it's just it stays with you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I know that when I was talking to Bevan after the event that, um, you know, she talked about the smell stain with her and it's funny because you can almost bring the smell back to you pretty quickly with, yeah. within a few seconds I was thinking about because it, it never goes away. And the sounds, I also mentioned that I know that they used recordings of the sounds and sort of houses are used in interrogation techniques in the military, you know, like for special forces mm. and things. So that just shows you how horrendous they actually are. Yeah, you know, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Leslie, you know, we mentioned, yeah. Bevan said they obviously she, she's relatively new to this and so is Tammy, so it's very important yeah. that we have other people supporting yeah. us. So how important do you feel that it is to have other activists yeah. supporting you on the actual yeah. day of these events? Yeah, it is very important because it's, it's like a, it's a surreal situation. You've got, you know, the birds are singing, the, the sky is blue, green fields, and there's this place behind you where there's all sorts of horrors going on and it's that life balance between life and death it's i think it's really important to have um the support of um, other activists because it's a very emotional experience um and you need you need to be able to talk to each other and to try to maintain um a sense of uh, reason and why you're there and and it's just you know you're surrounded by all this beauty nature mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of horrors going on behind you um and sometimes activists go and they think, oh, I'll be fine, you know. But there's all sorts of reasons, um, all sorts of reasons that they, but if they break down, you know, it's not something you can um, plan for because you don't know what's going to actually hit you. Something it's totally innocuous might just sort of be the last straw, you know. Um, and you just need to have the support of other people who are away that that can happen um and it, it, sometimes you just need to give somebody a hug and you need a hug yourself you know and yeah. some encouragement and just to you know say well, you know, we, don't, we don't know why we're here we all knew it wasn't going to be you know walking the park shortly mm -hmm. yeah. um it's just been having people there that are aware of the pitfalls yeah I think it uh, kind of affects people sort of in different ways particularly in the yeah. early days when you haven't started to do you know like you haven't done many um, it's much more sort of visceral actually at the scene but, but, but when you've done it a few times it's, it's probably later in the day it, it sort of with me yeah. it, it tend to have a, a scream and shout or cry or when, when I'm driving home you know um, yeah. so I'm not actually at the event but it's uh, but it does affect everyone and I think if it doesn't affect you you really shouldn't be doing it because you, you're desensitised to it or you're mm -hmm. so damaged that you can't mm -hmm. um, advocate probably for the animals um, so, uh, so Catherine, can you explain how you feel in the hours and the days after the vigil? So after the Manchester Pig one, for example, how did you feel afterwards? Um, yeah, I feel pretty awful in the days afterwards. Um, I think even as someone who knows what, what happens in animal agriculture and yeah. opposing it, it's so possible to feel um, disconnected in a way. Um, I think after I've seen the animals born in myself, like it really kind of sinks in that this is actually happening. I think worldwide to nearly 200 million animals every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I find myself thinking a lot about like the individual, sorry, <laughs> the individual animals that I like might have made eye contact with um, and that how by the time I get home from the vigil, um, they'll, be, they'll be dead. Um, and yeah, I just, I think a lot about the scale of it and it just seems incomprehensible that we do this to them when we don't have to and it makes me find it even harder to understand how people who I know who care a lot about human rights um, and consider themselves to be opposed to other forms of discrimination such as racism or sexism just turn a blind eye and look the other way when it comes um, to animal exploitation and discrimination and um, so yeah it just really really brings it home how wrong it is like what's happening um, but it also kind of makes me feel more motivated to do whatever I can to change people's perceptions. Yeah I think I mean the scale you mentioned there is, is a valid point as well because obviously we see these numbers I mean when I'm doing videos and things I'm talking about the statistics 
Um, it's very, very easy to get lost in the, in, the, uh, in the millions and billions of animals and the trillions of fish around the world who are getting killed for the, for the flesh. Mm-hmm. But obviously we are at Saves are looking at the individuals and we're making contact with the individuals and we know that they are all totally individual and different from each other. Um, you know, we know that from our companion animals, so we're very, very different as well. Um, so I think it's important not to lose sight of the fact that every one of those animals in the truck is, an, is a complete individual. Um, mm-hmm. So Bevan, do you think that uh, doing these these um, these events doesn't make you a better activist? Hundred percent. I mean, the I think what's really rang home to me since I've, I've done the two was, you know, I would I would say to these people and like what you said, the figures in my head, you know, I would say, you know, however million die a day, or you know, I would say the figure for Manchester, three thousand pigs are sent to slaughter a day, and then just seeing them trucks and actually seeing the actual individuals in it you know these three story trucks these three levels and I mean I counted in one section just 40 pigs in one section so what what's that close to 400 in one truck roughly yeah Yeah. and it's just the more the injustice and actually seeing these as individuals and seeing this and now I've actually witnessed it it's almost like well I'm not a brainwashed I'm not a brainwashed vegan I've actually seen this now um you know, I've actually, I've took these photos, I've took these videos and I'm sharing these now. It's not just things I've got off documentaries. I've actually witnessed this. And I think it bears a lot more weight when you're speaking to people out on the street at Outreach, when you're actually showing them this and like, well, I actually was there. So this isn't something I've just pulled off the internet. I actually was there and this is what I've seen. And this is how disgusting the industry is. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's 100% made me much more involved in the activism and I can actually kind of relate to it a lot more. Yeah. definitely yeah thank you so Leslie what would you say to someone um you know presumably if, who's going to be a vegan and um, who was considered supporting a vigil in terms of you know the the two they're very worried about it that very anxious so how would you sort of like talk them about you know supporting a vigil um I would say that before attending the vigil they would have to um do some um outreach work first mm-hmm. get used to talking to people about what happens um because I think if you haven't done that, it could be you could get a, a shock um, when you arrive there and something that you totally weren't prepared for is coming in front of your eyes. Um, I think you need to be you need to know what the final outcome is for the animals, so what actually physically happens to them. And that you should have either seen footage or um, you know been told exactly graphically what happens to the animals at the abattoir. Um, you need to be fully prepared because you need to be able to um, deal with your emotions and other people's emotions as well. Um, but if I was going to um, support somebody who was going to one for the first time, I, I think I would ask them, are you sure that you're ready? Um, are you sure that you, you're going to be able to cope with it? Because it's not just the day, it's what, how you're going to feel afterwards. Um, and just make sure they're fully aware of uh, what they're entering into. And, yeah. just, um, and just saying, you know, anybody, all of the activists around you when you're there, um, if it's the first time or, or even the second time, you know, there are people around you who are there that that will support you if you need anything if you need if you need a hug if you need somebody to just talk to you if you need assurance anything yeah. just ask somebody yeah just make I mean, feelings yeah. known yeah, I mean that was what when I when my first ritual um, half a dozen years ago it was uh, it was actually the people who who got me through it. You know the kind of people who you don't necessarily know really really well, but you know the activists and they're going mm-hmm. through the same thing. So I, I kind of broke down, and the first thing I got was a hug of both of them. You know, and it was it was just lovely um, because they do understand it and they've been there. And I kind of, and I think that even though I've done quite a few now, I, I always want, you know, sort of try to remember that moment and how it felt for me as a, as a, bit, as a sort of novice, novice activist at SAVES. Um, so just a final question to all of you. Um, so could you just share one brief memory um, of the event which has stayed with you? So, you know, the, the vegan whistle event we did or the, uh, the Manchester Pig Save. So Leslie, could you could you maybe share something? Yeah, yeah my first vigil was um, at uh, Linden Foods and I... Uh, I, I think I had a bit of a de- bit of a delayed reaction. I was I thought I was all prepared, 
And the thing that really struck me on that first day was when the one of the truck drivers braked at the gates and there was this clatter of hooves and it it hit me then. God, these are real animals, you know, and they're gonna die. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, Bevan. Um, I think for myself would be the Manchester one, and it was actually kind of about how it, it this stayed with me. So obviously, as Tammy said, that you could hear the screaming. You, you didn't even have to go around the back at times to hear it. You could hear it from the front gate. And I don't know if Tammy and Leslie remember and Catherine when we were sitting um, in the service station on the way back. Um, and I could, we were sitting near a costa and I could hear the milk steamer. Yeah. And it, it sounded exactly like, you know what, and I, my heart was just like this constantly and I've just felt like I was constantly reliving it like I just couldn't shake my head out of that thing at all um and then and then a similar thing happened at outreach actually just um just yesterday I was talking to um a lady who was thinking of joining the saves and I could hear I could hear a, a child crying and it, it was like a complete like wailing sort of sound and I said to her I said see look this is how it kind of stays with you because I can hear that now and you've not even picked up on it and I've picked up on it and it's it's my stress response to it and yeah. um, so that's the thing that stayed with me and I'm still get slightly triggered by now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tammy? Yeah, um, obviously the same as them in the sound, um, it stays with us. But also for me, it was um, at Manchester Pig Save, seeing this pit, like, actually I went to the truck and there was like a little hole in like, in the net, in the like board bit. You know, and I remember getting the camera through and there was one particular pig that was standing there and he was just sort of glare, like staring at us in just complete fear. He was frozen and he just didn't move. He blinked and might move his head, but not actually like, he just didn't move. But then there was a one next to them that actually come up because a lot of them would come because they were curious and never had like human touch before, really. Um, and I remember I come up and they were curious and obviously I remember touching his nose with my hand and just the feeling that, you know, I'm, this person I'm touching is not going to be here in about an hour. You know, and it's just, and, you know, and they're just babies, they're just five to six months old. And I think that's what gets me is the fact of how young they are and, you know, what gives us the right just to take that away. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Catherine? Um, yeah, so I mean, memory from the Manchester one, apart from obviously the horrible screaming that you can hear is, um, I think it was the last truck that came in um, before we left. Um, I looked inside and kind of all of the pigs were like jostling around into each other and there was just this one like she just stood there like with her head down um, and she just looked completely broken like she'd already given up um yeah I just keep thinking about her since then yeah um thank you very much all of you for sharing uh, with, with us and, and obviously the viewers will be watching this later on I know obviously that some of the people who will be watching this will be vegans, that some of them will be activists who haven't been to saves before, but hopefully some of some of them won't actually be uh, either vegans or activists, but they will be moved to, uh, you know, by, by the words you've, you've used here. Um, we know there's some fa fantastic organisations that we formed um, in this country with Sur uh, Surge and Bradley Luke Farm, Jay Wild, uh, you know, helping farmers who are dairy farmers or, or cattle farmers transition to plant-based farming. And in Scotland, we've got farmers for stock free farming as well. And they all again have massive successes in terms of helping people uh, transition. So, you know, the, the help and support, the financial support, the emotional support is out there. Uh, and it's also important to say that obviously the safe movement is a peace based movement. So it's not a shouty one. It's, we don't um, have megaphones. You know, we, we treat the workers and we treat the drivers with respect. And because you never know what, what part of the journey um, they're at. And we, we know obviously from Jay Wilde, he was one of these drivers who actually went in, absolutely hated taking his animals in. And when it, you know when you're confronted by people standing there with banners, it does make you feel incredibly guilty and, and judged. Um, so we need to be there to be supportive of these people because they're they're a victim of the, the you know the meat industries as well. Um, but I think this um, this interview would be really really good in terms of sort of bringing to a close. Um, you know, we've had a series of um, you know a couple of weeks worth of um, of things for Regan Russell, and um, and for the match the pig save. Um, but it's important to know that obviously these saves are out there and people can um, you know can sort of like sort of search for them, Google them, and and, and contact people like Catherine or Dale who are, who run these events, um, and obviously look at you know there's, there's saves right across the country and around the world as well. 
Um, but I'd like to say thank you very much for everyone today for sort of agreeing to do this interview because I know what you know on a Sunday afternoon it's not a very pleasant subject, but it is very, very important because each and every one of you, if you, you know, if one person who watches this video um, you know, decides to go vegan as a result of it, that's a full truckload of animals you were talking about there who've, whose lives have been saved. So it's all worthwhile just for that. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. So I'd like to say thank you to Leslie and to Bevan and to Tammy and Catherine for being so open and so honest and, uh, and you know, agreeing to do this. This is Anna Malia from Northeast Animal Rights signing off and saying thank you very much to everyone and bye-bye for now.